Anyway, according to the UK Telegraph newspaper, Boris Johnson faces a major Tory revolt this week over plans to allow children to be used as spies by state agencies against their parents. Ian Duncan Smith, the former Tory leader, and David Davis, the former Brexit secretary, are among the Tory MPs backing rebel proposals to restrict the use of children as spies when the covert human intelligence source bill returns to the Commons. My God. Mr Davis told The Telegraph the government faces a major backlash if it pushes ahead with this plan. Everyone I've spoken to has been horrified by it when it has been explained to them, Davis said. It will allow 16 and 17-year-olds to spy on their parents. It also authorises them to commit crimes as well, so it needs to be extremely tightly controlled and those controls need to be greater than what the government is proposing. Joining me now is Brendan O'Neill, editor of Spiked Online, which I urge you to visit and to subscribe to. Brendan, great to see you, mate. How are you? Hi, Roman. I'm good, thanks. Now, uh, you won't be going in any shark-infested waters, but uh, over <laughs> at the Commons there, it's looking pretty grim. Uh, you've long warned, Brendan, against the increasing totalitarianism of the modern left. But did you ever think in your lifetime you'd see a British government encouraging kids to spy on their parents? It's pretty shocking. Uh, you know, Boris Johnson has been a fairly disappointing prime minister so far, especially on issues of liberty, the issue on which he made his name to a large extent. And as you were saying, this um, covert human intelligence bill allows for some pretty shocking things, including encouraging or recruiting 16 and 17 year olds, legally children, to spy on their parents and to commit crimes in the process of spying on their parents if they think if there's a strong suspicion that their parents are up to no good. This is really, really dodgy. Now, everyone accepts the needs for covert human intelligence. We need spies. We need to break up terrorist groups and do lots of other things like that, too. But I think recruiting children to watch their own families, spy on their own families, there's something quite Orwellian about that. Let's not forget that 1984 had child spies in it whose job was to spy on the adults of society and make sure they weren't doing anything bad. We shouldn't be repeating, we shouldn't be doing the same thing in the and UK. What, what are they supposed to be spying on? What are they saying? Oh, you're not wearing your mask, or oh, you've got sat, uh, dad sat too close to Gran on the sofa. What, what are they supposed to be spying on? Well, that's the, it's interesting you raise that question. So the, th this bill would be to spy on people who are suspected of fairly serious crimes, um, drug dealing, maybe terrorism, things that obviously no one should be doing. But what's really interesting is the left in this country is actually quite critical of this bill. Oh. But the left, of course, supports uh, children spying on their parents as well. There have been numerous campaigns over the past few years where children have been encouraged to watch their parents' environmental behaviour and oh, to report God. them to schools if their parents aren't being eco-friendly. Or, you know, children are... Uh, there's a new bill going through in Scotland which would make it potentially a crime to commit hate speech in your own home, which openly encourages children to squeal their parents to the police if they are Islamophobic or transphobic or whatever else. So what we have now is both the right and the left in different ways support children spying on their own families. It's really my dodgy God. stuff. Oh, Jesus. Now, Brendan, you mentioned eco-enviro craziness. Two of my favourite topics together. Britain this week <laughs> is shivering under Arctic-style conditions, all because of global warming, of course. But the COVID police are running around fining people for throwing snowballs. Is this what they call the snowflake police? Brandon. Well, it's it's completely crazy. You know, uh, the first thing that's fun. I'm looking out my window now, and the whole, uh, whole all outside of my apartment is covered in snow. And it always brings to mind uh, a climate expert in the year 2000 <laughs> who said that ch uh, children in Britain would never see, see snow, snow again. They wouldn't know what snow was. <laughs> and now there are kids outdoors making snowmen, throwing snowballs. So the global warming stuff is completely wrong as usual. But also, as you say, we. Have have this new cult of miserabilism and authoritarianism where people are now being told and warned don't go outside and make snowmen, don't throw snowballs because they aren't on the list of legal, reasonable excuses that you can oh. leave your house. I mean, it's just deranged. You know, a, a small group of kids throwing snowballs is not going to spread the virus, but we live in such an authoritarian climate that people are going crazy about it anyway. 
Just quickly, Brendan, uh, in your excellent editorial in Spiked Online this week, you write how America is saved. The Republic has been rescued. The healing of the nation can begin now that authoritarian populism has been defeated and the adults are back in charge. Do I detect a note of facetious, facetiousness there in your writing, Brendan? Yeah, I was being a tad <laughs> sarcastic there. Um, I really hate this phrase, you know, the idea that Biden and Harris are the adults and they're back in charge of the children, which supposedly is the rest of America. You know, these adults, this old establishment, these managerial elites, these are the people who gave us a terrible recession, a great amount of poverty, disastrous military interventions around the world. Biden was a huge supporter of the war in Iraq. These people caused huge destruction, unemployment, poverty, authoritarianism as well. The idea that they are the adults, they are the cool ones, they are the ones who will put America back on the straight and narrow. It's a complete and utter fantasy. The old establishment is more dangerous than uh, anything that the Trump administration did. And the sooner people realize that, the better. And well, Brendan, comedian, well, I use the term in its loosest uh, possible meaning, comedian Sarah Silverman says the First Amendment will need to be amended post-Trump in order to ensure that dangerous ideas are not given free expression. And she's not joking. She's not joking. It's, it's terrifying. You know, this is actually really serious because since the storming of the Capitol on the 6th of January, there has been outright hysteria in the US and in other parts of the Western world. And in moments of hysteria, very stupid authoritarian things can be done. We've had Sarah Silverman saying, you know, let's rethink the First Amendment. We've had Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez saying that the government in America may need to rein in the media, which completely goes against the First Amendment. There is this idea that America is swarming with domestic terrorists and horrible Trump supporters and evil libertarians, and we need legislation to rein them in. This is the McCarthyite moment that we're living in post-Trump, where the liberal elites want to exact their revenge on society. And I think it could lead to a really worrying moment of illiberalism in American history. I agree with you, Brendan. I think the only bill should be passed is one that says comedians should be funny. But that'll be... Let's <laughs> hope that happens one day. Uh, Brendan, great to see you, mate. We'll chat soon. Thank you so much. Thanks. Stay safe. Thanks, Ryan.